Hey guys, how's everything going? This is Jaser. In this video, um, I'm, this video is a, the second video of a relay series. Uh, in the previous one, we've set up the basic GraphQL endpoint and uh, tried to connect to the GraphQL uh, with relay queries and uh, managed to uh, fetch the basic status information for a specific user. Let's review our code a little uh, for, for a little more. Yeah, we rem uh, render a uh, nap. Uh, first, we use a provider to provide the a basic uh, endpoint information for relay to uh, fetch data on. And then we define this app query. This is the basic query, only one query app query to fetch the data. And then we use preload, oh no, here, use query loader. And then we call, we trigger this API uh, when the button is clicked and store, and then all these uh, GraphQL uh, data response will, is stored in this app query ref and uh, we need to extract the data by using use preloaded query and get the data and when the when the because we set the api to uh two minutes a delay uh it will be suspended uh when we use the data access the data user uh the id the user is not there yet so it will throw it in promise and suspense will catch that promise and render uh, the loading. So about suspense, I've also uh, recorded a video about how internally React suspense is working. It's actually similar to the error boundary. Uh, if you're interested, please search my channel for that. And so in this video, let's try to uh, dig more about the source code. So uh, for at the first sight, you might think that this is not so different from a normal non uh, GraphQL like a REST uh, implementation, right? Uh, in a real uh, uh, in our normal implementation, we would create some hooks like this, like uh, SW, SWR. Um, I just uh, use these uh, hooks to hold the API, and uh, in that state, we store the data, store the loading state, store the error status, and this load is the trigger function, and when it is called, we will just uh, discard all the stored information and request a new one, right? So yeah, you might think that that's the same. Why we bother? So let's try to re rewrite our uh, source code a little bit. In this, remember, in this implementation, we actually would render app, right? And then uh, fetch data, and then re-render, right? So it's like a waterfall, as Dan said, and we could actually imp uh, improve uh, this scenario, but it, uh, but to, to demonstrate demonstrate this, um, I'll just uh, modify our code a little bit, bit, bit because uh, in this application we need to uh, click a button to fetch the data. Here we we'll just uh, um, use an effect here. In effect, we just uh, we just fetch the first one. Okay, load the user without. Uh, the button. And uh, re return now here. Yeah, let's view our demo. So now, rather than we rather than we click the button, it will just try to fetch the data uh, right away. So. For this, it still satisfied this waterfall. Render this app in the effect, we load it, fetch the data, and then we render, right? It's the same. But actually, if we trigger this app query, the loading loaded app query as a resource, we can actually uh, split split it from this app. I mean, we could use this kind of uh, load query and uh, create a resource from it. So app, let's say app query ref, as load query, and we just pass in this app query. Uh, no, we need to, because it's not under this environment anymore, we need to pass in the uh, environment and query query. This query needs a, a parameter, so we set the ID to user one. So this is the app. So when this module, this JavaScript file is loaded, the API will be fetched right away before the app is rendered, right? The app render is depending on something else, but the API fetch will start right away. Okay, we need to load it. So the app actually accepts this ref, and we pass the app to this ref. Uh huh. Uh, 
Uh, great, so yeah. Get the ref and then use query loader. Uh huh, no, we don't need it anymore. It's already uh, fetched outside of it, so we remove it. And, uh, and uh, we could uh, make it more concise here is, uh, is app query ref is now. It's not now, now anymore, so we don't need to worry about it. So there, yeah, it's not now. Okay, great. It's cleaner and faster, right? Why? Let's uh, let's try to see how it works. Loading. JSR one, I love it. So it's the same, but we actually, from our eyes, there's no difference. But there's a huge difference. Is that now it becomes becomes um, fetching fetch data and uh, render app. And when it's ready, we render. So. Theoretically, it's much faster because these two process, fetch data is async, and the app render is also async, and separated it, right? We would update to the to to the uh, to the uh, latter one, which finishes. I mean, if app render finishes finishes after the data fetch, we'll just re-render it again. If uh, data fetching uh, finishes after the app app render the re-render will uh, uh, will occur after the data fetching so so this is what this video wants to talk about uh, the relay actually separates the data uh, fetching from the uh, app uh, the component rendering process meaning that uh, they are two different kind of stuff depending on each other and it, and the more uh, more about it is that uh, in this uh, and data fetching, there will be data dependencies, which is um, with fragments we will cover in the next video um, after we created more uh, entry uh, data in our GraphQL endpoint, which is because this is a to-do app, we need to handle the to-do data, right? Okay, we will see what that is in next one to truly understand what the power is relay. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.